Hello travelers, welcome back or welcome to my channel. This video is for the 9 to 5 gamers, the new gamers, and the Stardew seems like a literal horror game to me gamers. I'm here to help make Stardew as cozy as people claim it is. Let's start with talking about how passing out in the game isn't all that bad. Sure, if you're not in bed by 2 a.m., you are going to pass out, but you only lose gold, and that gold is set to a maximum. You lose 10% up to 1,000, meaning if you've only got 800 gold, the max you'll ever lose is 80. If you pass out from exhaustion, you'll lose the same amount of money, but you wake up with less energy the next day. You can avoid this by only using the scythe when the game warns you you feel exhausted, since the scythe is a tool that takes absolutely no energy to wield, as does the sword. The scarier thing about passing out is losing precious items, but that only happens when your health hits zero thanks to a monster. And this is something that you can completely avoid. Just make sure that you have some good food items on you when you go down into the mines. And in single player, time will pause when you eat something. So if an enemy is about to hit you and you eat the food, they won't hit you while you're eating, meaning you'll take the damage after restoring your health. I know having the starting point include monsters when I'm trying to convince you that this game really can be cozy isn't really doing me any favors, but just stick with me. The other major reason Stardew seems to cause stress, and I don't blame you if you're one of the people that this happens to, is the fear of missing out on information, on a recipe, on an in-game event. There's so much to do and even more with the 1.16 update that just came out it really can feel like you'll never keep up. But here's the thing, it always repeats. Every recipe from the TV repeats. It's impossible to actually miss out on anything in Stardew because once the first year is over, you'll have a chance to do it all again. Every festival, every merchant visit, every cutscene you accidentally miss the trigger for, it all repeats. Which leads me into my next point, year two. If you're familiar with the game and are watching this video, you might be saying, sure, but if I don't get it all done by the end of year two, grandpa won't like me. And while he may not give you the reward you could have achieved, that doesn't mean you don't have another chance. If you don't light all the candles to get the reward, grandpa's ghost returns every single end of the year from that point forward, giving you the opportunity time and time again to finally make grandpa proud. Another common reason people decide Stardew Valley just isn't for them is the lack of tutorial. So I'm going to give you some starting points that will make your first week, month, and year in Stardew more approachable. And if you're not interested in these tips to see if they make you feel a little bit more at ease with trying out the game again, that's okay. Not every game is for everyone. And there are so many mods out there for Stardew that will make the game exactly what you want it to be if vanilla just isn't for you. There isn't a wrong way to enjoy Stardew. If this is your first playthrough, before you even start, I'd recommend choosing the basic farm or the new Meadowlands farm. The forest farm is the better general overall option because it spawns foragibles on the farm itself, but it's maybe not as easy to learn the game in. Other farms are gonna be a little harder to work with as a new player. There are other options in the starting menu that make your life a lot easier as well. If you click on the wrench at the starting menu, you'll be able to select guarantee year one completable under the community center bundles. This means that all necessary items will appear in the rare cart. The rare cart is a traveling merchant that sells items that you might not find as easily elsewhere, though they can be really, really high in price. You can talk to her and see what she has available on both Fridays and Sundays in game. If this is only your first or second time playing Stardew, I recommend that you leave everything else in the options as is. Now, when it comes to actually starting your first day, you're gonna wanna make sure that if you picked a farm that gives you starting seeds, you do place them close to a water source because it makes your life easier for refilling the watering can, but that isn't absolutely necessary. And if you pick the Meadowland farm, you're going to get hay. Don't put this in your coop's feeder just yet, and I'll explain why in a minute. It's also important to note with your crops that you don't plant more than 15 if you don't want to have crows have the chance to eat them. 
It's a random spawn whether or not a crow will eat a crop, but as long as there's 15 or less, this will never happen in the game. So I always only plant 15 crops until I have a scarecrow. That way I don't have to worry about losing something that's worth a lot. It's also a lot less energy having to worry about watering a huge garden. A little garden is much more sustainable to me. When it comes to seeds and what to plant, you will get 15 parsnip seeds when you load into any farm that's not Meadowlands. You can either plant those ones or you can sell the seeds directly to Pierre at the general store and then use the money from selling the seeds on top of your starting gold to buy seeds for better quality crops. I personally like planting about two of the parsnips and selling the rest of the seeds because I wanna make sure that I have access to the potatoes, green beans, and cauliflower because I'll need them for the community center and for future quests in the game. We'll talk more about unlocking the community center a little bit later. You'll also wanna make sure that while you're running around your farm clearing things out, that you focus primarily on getting rid of the wood because you'll need 50 of them to make a chest. And I would do that right away because your backpack's pretty small and you'll want somewhere to store your stuff when you're not using it. And while you're doing this, make sure that you don't cut down all your grass. If anything, avoid cutting any of your grass as much as you can because that can be turned into hay once you get a silo, which ties into what I said about not putting the hay in your chicken coop's feeder right away. As long as you open the doors to your coop, your chickens will feed themselves on the grass outside. So the only time you actually have to put hay on their feeder is when it's raining. It's always going to rain on day three. So make sure that you put two pieces of hay, one for each chicken, on their little trough feeder on the night of the second. The rest of the weather is going to be RNG. So just check the television to find out what the weather the next day is. And as long as it's not raining or storming, the chickens will feed themselves outside and you don't have to close the coop door or the barn door at night. While we're on the topic of animals, I'll also mention that you do wanna get your silo as soon as possible. And if you picked a farm that's not Meadowlands, you'll wanna do this before buying the coop, even though the game's journal tells you to get a coop first. It will make your life so much easier to have your silo already available and a ton of hay stocked up. If you did choose the Meadowlands farm, you are going to want to work towards the silo pretty quickly, but don't stress about it too much. You got a lot of hay when you first started up the game, and that should last you long enough to get a silo built. And if it isn't, you can always buy more hay from Marnie. She lives in the farm just below yours. Another thing to do within the first couple days is make sure that you get your fishing rod from Willie as soon as you can. And if you don't like fishing and you end up trying it and you find it really difficult, that's okay. But fishing is a great way to make money early game. I actually spend all day on the second fishing, like all day, and then selling the fish to Willie as I catch them because you'll fish right outside the shop and the shop will be open most of the day. The other option is using the second day to talk to people around town or just forage and explore, which is also completely fine because on the third day when it's raining, you won't have to water your crops. So that's another great day to go fishing, especially because certain fish can only be caught when it's raining. You also have a chance to catch jelly in its various forms. And this is a great starter food for when you end up in the mines, which you'll get access to on day five. Now at the risk of making this video way too long, I'll start going in more point form when you hit day five about what will make your life a lot easier. To start, make sure on the fifth day that you enter town between eight and 9 a.m. because this will trigger the cutscene that allows access to the community center. And make sure you read the little plaque inside the community center to the left or else you'll have to wait extra days before being able to start completing it. Make sure that you check your mail every single day. After you trigger the community cutscene and you've read the plaque, head up to the mines because that's how you'll get your sword. Just walk in and it'll trigger that cutscene. You can choose to start going into the mines now or simply wait on it. It's completely up to you. I also personally like to bring a chest with me and place it in the mines. That's so that when I get down to the elevator floors, I can come back up, unload my very small backpack, and then go back down and collect more items. 
And because the 5th is always a Friday, it's a great opportunity to stop at the saloon on your way home because most villagers are going to be hanging out there tonight and giving you the opportunity to meet them for the first time if you haven't already. Moving on past the 5th in Stardew, this is when the game becomes whatever you want it to be. There's no direction on exactly how you have to do things or in what order. The most important thing is make sure that you get your silo before moving on to more barns or coops. The game should start giving you hints about where you should go next and little things that you can do. Just make sure to check the calendar at Pierre's General Store if you're not sure if there's anything you should be doing very specifically that day. But honestly, the game is really good about reminding you via the mailbox and in the top corner by the clock, there'll be a different symbol when it's a festival style day. But these are all little things you'll get used to as you play the game. And remember, it's okay if you make a mistake because everything is going to repeat. And don't be afraid to look stuff up online. With just a couple keywords, you'll probably find the answer to your question because Stardew is such a popular game. And if you're still watching this video or skip to the end to see what I'll say, I'm just gonna reiterate, there is no wrong way to play Stardew Valley. Whether it's a month-long project for 100% completion or you log in a couple times a month to pet your chicken you named Goose, you're doing it right. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you feel like it. But most importantly, have a very magical day.